Hi, everyone, and welcome back to season six of Stand Up and Stand Out, Parte y Destecate. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Nikki Green, and we're taking it back to the old school with our original guest interviews you have come to love. We spent the last two seasons learning more about the two books I launched this year, Chameleon Mindset and The Great Lead Hership Awakening. And now that I've come up for air from the writing and publishing process, I wanted to reach out to my network and share more of the great work others are doing. I hope you enjoy season six, and I look forward to hearing your feedback and comments on the fascinating topics we will cover with each of these new guests. Hello, and welcome back to Stand Up and Stand Out. This is season six, and we are focusing on community, and we're expanding our community today with the lovely Dean Fisher. So Dean Fisher is an accomplished certified meeting professional with a wealth of experience spanning over three decades in the five diamond events industry of Las Vegas. As a meeting broker at Meetings Made Easy, he is leveraging his executive hotel experience to give his clients insightful advantages in contract negotiations and developing synergy relationships with hospitality partners. His extensive knowledge of property sales and large event operations enables him to navigate the complexities of site selection throughout the world with ease. Hi, Dean. How are you doing today? Hi, Nikki. It's great to see you. So much more to learn about you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. It's been a great journey to get here. Well, you have a fascinating story. So I'd like to kick things off and for you to share a little bit about um, where you're at, where you've been and where you're going. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll start from the very beginning and run through it real quick. I grew up in Las Vegas when we didn't even know it wasn't a town yet. It was about 50 years ago. And I had the amazing ability to grow up in a community that was very multi-diverse. And so we didn't know any better. It was a transient town. And I got that opportunity through schooling to really embrace humanity. And there were some keynotes over the way that I noticed that was happening in my life that I just kind of looked the other way from. And there seemed to be some senses around me that I was tuned into that helped me like a guiding hand. I never seemed to have a, a problem. And I always realized something out there was looking out for me. And as I grew into my 20s, I met my beautiful wife, uh, my life partner. We've been together for over 33 years. Uh, we started, yeah, exactly, big heart. We started really young. Our, um, you know, that was the trade-off, obviously, to have this great end of our life as we started when we were 21, having kids and beautiful family. Both, I just uh, found out I'm gonna be a grandfather. Again, big heart, um, first one. I know, I know my daughter's turning 30 and she's married and has a beautiful house she's bought up here in Reno. She's a clinical pharmacist and, you know, I'm just so proud of her. My son, he's like me. He's a hustler in Vegas, making it work for him on the casino, on the strip in Las Vegas and uh, the Mirage. And I'm so proud of him. He makes the best out of his life and has this amazing circle of friends that just catapult him. His community is really something to look at. And so... Those two things alone gave me the confidence about four years ago to uh, separate myself from what I had been involved with for quite some time. Over 30 years, I was in the casino industry in Las Vegas. I was with Steve Wynn for a few years and ended up being a, a MGM baby over the end. I uh, grew through the ranks and ended up being an executive over the years. I actually ran the convention team at Bellagio when I left. So it was an amazing adventure. I won't bore the audience with all the details, but I'll just tell you that I've seen it all. I mean, there's definitely a, a way to look at it and Vegas shows it to you. So here I am. I uh, like your story right before the pandemic, just, I, I got a calling. I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, I usually explain it like this. I was living on a staircase and I got to the top of the staircase. I was one of these really lucky few that achieved the goals that you can achieve. I understood how to manifest in the real life we're in and I knew how to put myself forward and I had drive. And that really is all you need to get to where you want to get to, except for I wasn't happy inside. I was really hollow. I didn't understand why. And so I took the next step, which I had never taken before. I'd mastered the outside. I'd never gone on the inside. I was very afraid of what was in there. And I took a deep dive. I was at the gym one afternoon working out and I heard what everybody's heard once in their life. If you spend 10,000 hours working on something, you'll be an expert. And I thought, what would I love to do? I love human nature. It's in my work field. It's what I do for a living, moving people at large and large elements and large, uh, large numbers. And so I dove in and little did I know that was going to come to really where I'm at now, the other side of it. And it's just, it's been an amazing journey. Here I am out here essentially with the ability to help my clients and planners create the best circumstances for their guests from all this knowledge I had on the other side. 
And yet it just feels like I'm giving back every day. So it's, it's just a beautiful feeling. Now it doesn't feel like a staircase anymore. It feels like the rings in a tree. And my truth is you're always in the right place at the right time. You don't necessarily need to look for it. Just realize it. When you're looking back, if I had only one thing to say to everybody is I would have slowed down a little bit and just enjoyed it a little bit more. And I'm sure that resonates with so many people. It's we got on this treadmill, on the staircase, on the escalator, whichever direction it was sort of taking us. And we just kind of were along for the ride. Um, And I think, you know, about that time, whether there was different reasons why we kind of started to change that direction, but just realized that life wasn't resonating with us anymore and starting to see that there was something more for us to do, to give back, to have more impact and to do things that really resonate with us. And I just love our connection of community, you know, having been born in Reno, Nevada, uh, my mom, my best friend, my ex-husband all went to the University of Nevada, Reno. Many of my friends moved back and forth, you know, sort of between the Las Vegas area and Reno. Um, Nice to see that your daughter is up there now. I I miss my hometown so much. Um, Just really um, a great caliber of people that live there. And I love to always represent it in such a positive way Um, and getting an expanding community there in Vegas, which I love. I just missed you this last trip, though, but uh, I know you're on the road a lot with your business. So talk a little bit about the new business and, you know, what you do and how you help people. I will. Absolutely. Um, Before that, the caveat is I actually live 40 minutes south of Reno right now. I'm in a house in Silver Springs, Nevada, and I can tell everybody the Carson Valley is probably the most beautiful place you've ever seen in your life. It looks like the backdrop to uh, The Hobbit with the mountains and Tahoe Mountains and whatnot in the, sun, in the winter. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Up here. You have to come and see it. But anyways, the reason why I'm able to live out here is because I have a job that allows me to work and travel. And that was my big goal. When I left the corporate side of my life, I said, I want a job that I can actually experience life wherever I'm at. And my wife can enjoy being a grandmother with my daughter. And it doesn't have to restrict us from where we're going. And so here I ended up in this beautiful career where I actually sourced and contract for my clients. That brings me on a lot of travel to get to know the destinations that I want them to go to under the experience and the insight that I've gained. So I'm able to give them a, a firsthand view. And I travel about six, seven times a year. The places I end up mostly are in the Caribbean lately, uh, mostly tier one cities in, in the U.S. as well. And in some Europe, um, this summer, there's uh, a trip planning this December to go over to Thailand and Singapore. And I'll tell you what I gained from a lot of these travels is a real great insight that every human on this planet is doing the same thing. They're working and they're sleeping and they're eating. We're the only ones on vacation or traveling. And so to find your balance and your center in those scenarios, I bring a lot of the techniques and a lot of the, um, the abilities that I've learned on the inside with meditation to find my center, no matter where I'm in traveling. And I believe a lot of our my belief as a light being is that I'm there to help ground and that a lot of this travel is really has a second edge to it. It's not so much about my clients as much as my commitment to the community that I'm a part of on this planet as a human. And that I believe that I, I'm here to do certain work that has uh, really nothing to do with earning money. And this brings me forward to the idea of doing these podcasts and the idea of uh, traveling and being a part of these communities in these different areas, because the truth is that this is actually uh, fulfilling me way more than anything else I've ever done in my life. And I just feel blessed. I think it's an amazing thing that when you can get out and experience who you are in your totality, I love the joke that in the events industry and hands up here, most of us are ADD and OCD and it really is our community. We love being around each other and we understand that's why we're so good at what we do. I also uh, dealt with dyslexia my whole life. And it was something about me that I could never really be free to talk about on the corporate side when I was there. Uh, Unfortunately, I really hope they bring, and that's one of my statements and missions is to bring that to the corporate world is when I was in my executive career, there was a moment where the president has sat down with me and said, okay, you're where you're supposed to be. We need the best of you. What is it that's going to upset you or make you in fear in these scenarios, I would have admitted my dyslexia. You know, I get up there and I'm literally in white noise trying to make sure I don't misspell something, invert something, say something too fast and not get my clear point across when the truth is now in this life I live and my truth, I may stumble a little bit in my words when I'm having a conversation with somebody when I'm in my truth, but they're getting the most creative side out of me. And 
that is the blessing really when you find your your balance in that life i'll say again and you live through that experience i love that and it's such an important thing you know one of the reasons i left corporate was because we could only be one thing you know if we didn't exactly meet, meet the mold then we were already sort of second class or less and and it just didn't fit who i was you know i had had a very dynamic experience throughout my life lived a lot of places i've continued to travel lots of places and really continued to open me up about understanding how to connect really with people. And that's by adapting ourselves to new experiences. And so I really just want to encourage, you know, that we start to really have that empathy and that understanding and that communication with each other so that we know what people's true hardships are. And we're not just trying to say like, I'm OK, I'm fine. You know, don't worry, because there is something to worry about. There is something that we really need to work on to bridge that understanding in all work environments. So I really appreciate your honesty there. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I might tangent for a moment, I have this term I use, uh, dudes need to start talking to dudes more. And that doesn't mean guys like males. It means that type of relationship you have with somebody that you're their dude. Um, we bring a lot of that stress to our structured workplaces, to our relationships at home. And we think that those are the solution points to talk through. They're not. These are your journey points. This is, you're the master of your own universe. You've created this play you live in. All these people in it are the actors you put there. The experience is yours to really develop through. It's, it's not the community that's around you to develop your experience. You're, you're going through that. And so if you have a trusted circle of, of relationships that you can go to and just say, Hey, I feel this way. And I, I have this amazing circle. I'm grateful for it. Uh, there's a man in my, my life named Paul Daniels that have spent time with me explaining to me the value of dyslexia and how in the workforce it's actually a talent versus what I held on to it for many years. And that would never have come through if I hadn't embraced that community development through Paul without being competitive. And that's where I think the difference is, is that what we've gone through, Nikki, is when you leave that environment that you're being paid for to act a certain way. You also let go of this competitiveness. You become compassionate. I have a whole network of people around me that I try and organize into these thoughts of what does it feel like to be in business from the first to the fifth year? Because it doesn't matter what business you're in. If you know there's a community out here doing the same thing and we're all going through the same steps and there is the same outcome, it is a proven thing. You can really understand that you're in the same place. I see social media like the building I used to work in without walls. And I reach out into it every day. It's how we met because that's like walking down the hallways at the casinos I used to work and waving at people saying, hey, how you doing? Good day to you. And if you like their post or you read their, their information, their post and you're moving on, it's like giving them a flower in their office. And so we don't need these buildings to feel the same community and how that growth comes from that community. The reason why I do uh, podcast guesting is for another reason Then I have these conversations every week with my clients, friends, and people. And I thought, well, if I put it into more of a community setting like this, then it'll share more and I'll have more value. It, it really only is because I'm living in that mindset. And I think that that, if we, if we all embrace our own from that perspective and not necessarily try and create anything from it, but just be a part of it, it's just a really cool place to be. And it's just so beautifully said is, this this critical nature of we aren't alone. I think so many of us felt that loneliness during the pandemic, and now we're trying to figure out how to get back into it. And things are, you know, not quite the same. We're not quite, you know, in person as much as we used to be, or we're in person in a different way, um, you know, a little bit more reserved. And so I really love that you did just reach out to me. And I've met so many wonderful people through that simple act. And not people trying to sell me anything, you know, because we get plenty of that through some of these DMs as well. But just a genuine connection. It was like, hey, I like what you do. I'd like to say hi. Let's be friends, you know, um, and really get back to that kind of true connection through these tools. And not just thinking again of like, I got to pay the bills or I'm going to be competitive in some sort of way. So I, I just love that you're highlighting that, that it is possible to be social on social media. You know, I use these analogies. This is how I talk and, and keep track of all the things that I've learned from my studies inside. The one I use the most is the, the analogy I use of the hourglass. And the bottom of the hourglass is the etherical world we live in. And the top of the hourglass is the, the world from above. And in the middle, where those two grains of sand fall through, that's that magical mustard seed point. And we tend to fall into the bottom of the hourglass a lot living on this planet. And I don't see things from a right or wrong perspective anymore. I see them from light. 
And we can choose to live in really bright white light every day. And that just means a better you than the day before, not against everybody else. Or we can live in gray or we can slide into dark. And I've had these experiences myself over the last 12 months. It happens to all of us, but none of it's wrong. It's part of the whole equation. And if you can get back to every day, you know, I grew out of a codependent mindset into this. And if you can get back to every day, focusing on how to set the example you'd like others to follow from, that's the best you can do. And when you start to do that, you can realize that I'm falling into this path where I see things physically as my problem rather than realizing that life is happening for me, not to me. And you can pull yourself right up out of that and say, hey, this is happening because behind this, I'm going to grow stronger, bigger, greater. And this is what we learn when you're out on your own, figuring out how to feed your family is that you realize it's not about the point to point connections. It's about creating synergy relationships. I like to move it up to above the center of the uh, hourglass and out of that and say, you're putting coins in an ethereal bank. And just by you and I sharing today, this information with each other, we're creating these connections around us in the universe that come back to us with ease that are our business. It's not you and I, but because we're able to go into this place, we offset energy every day by just being us. And by sharing a little bit more, it's even more energy you're offsetting in the earth. And if you teach a little bit, oh my gosh, but those figures that we all know that we use names that we love, they had these vessels they lived in that were so strong, they could carry light way more than us. And that's why they were able to do these magnificent things in the earth. But for us, we just have to be as hold as much light as we possibly can in our vessel and stop judging ourselves around all the other things. There's no right and wrong. It's just how you actually project every day the experience you want to live in. And hands up, I start in a tailspin every morning when I wake up. I don't know why. I have to remind myself in meditation that I actually am not this thing living on this earth and I'm actually bigger than that. And I'm here for a reason that's way bigger than how I feel about all this stuff. And I try and separate from the experience to become the experiencer again. And then through my day, if I get lost, I just go back to that center and say, Dean, you're the experiencer. This is happening for you. It's uncomfortable. You know, there's a whole nother podcast we could do on letting energy go and releasing through all these things for sure. But rest assured, it's not the physical actions that we do in our life that make a difference. It's putting coins in the ethereal bank every day by being there in those conversations with people we don't know in the grocery store or letting somebody in in traffic or not allowing yourself to get upset about things that don't need to be getting upset about and sharing more of a genuine self with other people around you. Hi, everyone. My name is Nikki Green, and I am a life and business resiliency expert. I have been helping people for over two decades overcome their challenges and achieve their life and business goals. I wrote Chameleon Mindset for others seeking clarity while acclimating to new situations. This entertaining yet research-based guide to transitions will open your mind to unique strategies for finding purpose and achieving your goals. Through my new book, you will create the happy life you desire with five philosophies for change, beginning with C for creative adaptability. Move from resistance to resilience by assessing and adjusting your risk tolerance. The practical lessons in Chameleon Mindset will help you shift your mindset, sharpen your skill set, and overcome the things holding you back from dealing with change. We'll have the new online course coming soon. There are half a dozen modules in total, but the way you choose to pursue your destiny, it's up to you. Each module can be done independently or repeated as necessary to tackle new obstacles and new goals in your life. And you can earn extra chameleon coins for uncovering them. What are chameleon coins, you might ask? These are reward XP that you can earn to purchase additional chameleon mindset benefits as you progress through the course. You can get swag, group coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, exclusive event tickets, and networking opportunities. And if you collect enough coins, you can even earn a full day VIP intensive with me to work solely on your goals. And by joining the Chameleon Crew, you will also gain access to my network of thousands of influential people around the world with expertise to help you on your business, your personal endeavors, health and fitness, and so much more. Reserve a copy today and click below to be added to our subscriber list. There's so many layers in there. The, the bank part actually just makes me think. So part of my building this new community with the chameleon mindset is we have chameleon coins. I'm literally rewarding people for their participation, for helping each other. And those chameleon coins, then I give back to them, you know, coaching and, and other things. 
So I really love those things. And I really feel like between school and corporate environments, we taught people that somehow that there's this pyramid. There's one promotion. There's one, you know, A grade. There's one board seat. And so it, we are constantly competing because as if there is only one. But I really love your view of expanding that idea that, no, there's enough for all of us to go around. And the more we share and the more we collaborate, the better off all of us are going to be. And the more we generate opportunities. That's that's the coolest part about it, that we're creating within and manifesting within that energy. So by everybody having the mindset that there's plenty of business, you're creating now even more business by more opportunities. And so it, it perpetuates. So look at the light analogy. You're staying in white light, it moves you in white light. If you're staying in gray, gray just keeps you where you're at. There's really nothing behind that funnel. And if you move to black, that funnel goes the other way and it goes real quick. So as much as light moves it real fast that way, it goes the other way as well fast. And so it, it really is just a production of keeping yourself out of now and in, in, in your ego and realize and experience you're in and, and the wonderful nature of that day. Like you said, yeah, every day should be embraced as the most magical day that something's going to happen. That's tough to do, but that's the work. That's where you start. That's when, if you're like, how do you get there, Dean? It's literally trying to appreciate the moment you're in. And if you're in a situation at work in a corporate environment and it's not going well for you, when you go back to your office, consider that was a lesson that you can learn from and try and appreciate what was behind it. You know, the people that were telling you things, it was hard for them to give you that feedback. It wasn't easy. They didn't enjoy that. And they're trying to help you grow. But we get so caught up in that, like you said, that competitive nature where everybody else has to fail for you to win. It's such a backwards way of living life. When you're out into your own world that can live in the corporate environment, that's the lesson. You can live in the same environment in the corporate environment, understanding that you're really only subject to one thing in life that judges you, and that's you. If you're happy where you're at doing what you're doing, you're doing the right thing. And I felt for a long time I was there to help people grow. I wanted to get out way before I did, but I stayed because I felt like this team needed me or this team needed me. And, you know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But in the end, it, it, it was obvious to me when it was time to make decisions because I got so uncomfortable doing what I was doing. So these are all signs as you're going through your life that when things start to feel a certain way, it's saying to you, time to move on, time to find a new opportunity, time to embrace that part of you that makes you feel uncomfortable because Here's the truth, everyone. When you become comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's when the magic of life happens. You allow so much around that projection of the, the tree. And, you know, if I gave you two stones and told you to skip one, it would be the staircase, small wake. If I told you to close your eyes and throw the other up in the water and hit, it would turn into this big ring, the same motion in the ocean. You have to let go to realize that you created this environment anyways for yourself before you even got here. So beautiful. Uh, I love this. And unfortunately, it's time for us to let go. We've covered so many <laughs> wonderful topics and, and so much more. And, and it just it really is that make sure you're feeling what you need to feel. Make sure you're moving through that process of, you know, processing what is happening to you. But make sure you have a methodology for getting you back into that light, back into the mentality to be able to move forward take the lessons as they come, and then move on to the next thing. Um, well, before we sign off, Dean, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? And we'll add those details into the show notes. Absolutely. Well, I'm a social media guy. I use it for business and LinkedIn is my home. So you can find me on LinkedIn under Dean Fisher. Absolutely. Uh, my email is dfisher at meetings with an S, M-E dot com. And that's for meetings made easy. We help our clients source and contract and friends the uh, connections throughout the whole industry. It's a really amazing time for us to be here. And, and we can't, we can't thank our, our partnerships with our events team, our events uh, partners and, and the industry alone. This is amazing. Oh, fantastic. And I know this is going to be the beginning of a beautiful partnership for us with many more things to come. Thanks everyone for joining us today for another episode of Stand Up and Stand Out. You know, you can catch us where all the cool kids hang out the do podcast on all the major platforms. And if you want to connect with Nikki directly, you can get a hold of me on my personal site, the Nikki Green 360com There you can check out my website. You can see any of my new books. You can learn more about this podcast and follow us on social. Can't wait to hear from you. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.